Our next lightning talk is uh, Emily Nastis is going to talk about a project that, the, and she's a, a science communicator, like many of our science communicators, sort of in between undergrad and grad school. Um, so um, uh, Emily has uh, been working with a really interesting challenge. We, for the last seven years, went to the National Park Service and measured their the condition of the biota, air, water quality, landscape integrity. The natural resources of, of the parks in this uh, in the in the Potomac region here, and uh, and then they asked us, can you do the cultural resources as well? You've done the air, the water, the biota. How, how are you going to do the cultural resources? So we're going to Emily's going to tell us how she's going to try to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't give it all away. Um, so you'll have to forgive me for being really brief with this one. This is a five-year project, and I'm barely going to scratch the surface of it. Uh, so for the last two years, I've been working with the National Park Service, um, along with other EN staff, uh, to evaluate their natural and cultural resources um, in the national capital region on the landscape scale. Um, so just a little bit of background on the National Park Service. I'm sure everyone here is familiar with them, um, but they've come a really long way in the last two decades, or sorry, the two last two centuries. Uh, Yellowstone was the first official national park in the 1800s. Um, shortly after that, Woodrow Wilson signed the National Park Service into uh, the federal system in the 1916s, and uh, since then it has grown to include over 400 different national park sites. And those are managed on a regional level. Uh, one of those regions is the National Capital Region. Um, so this is a really interesting area. It's 14 unique parks in the D.C. metro area. Um, some of them are traditional parks that you imagine, you know, like a Manassas Battlefield Park, um, Prince William County Park, but some of them are a little more complex, like the George Washington Memorial Parkway is a park. Um, the White House is a park. So, like, you, you have this wide span of uh, different types of parks in this capital region, which is part of the reason why we're using this as our study site. So in addition to being close to home, um, it has so many different types of parks that we're managing all together. So the idea here is that if we can find a tool or a way to manage these 14 very different parks in the capital region, we can apply this method to all the other parks in the US um, or the other regions. So I've highlighted those 11 parks um, on the previous slide because they are the ones that we've already done natural resource condition assessments for. Um, as Bill indicated before, those cover four different types of environmental factors that we evaluate based on scientific thresholds to determine um, the overall condition for these parks. So that's water, uh, biota, landscape dynamics, and air quality. Um, so the first phase of this project that I've been on was to update these natural resource condition assessments with current data. So the last two years, we've updated them to 2018 data. Um, and then we had to go on to the hard part, which was bringing in the cultural resources. Um, <laughs> so this is really tough. You know, it's, it's even hard to define cultural resources, um, or and especially hard to quantify them. They're those things that humans uh, value within the park that aren't necessarily ecological. Um, so for example, the historic structures in a site, that's a cultural resource, like how well are those doing? Um, or how well are the view sheds maintained? So we don't necessarily have the data on these types of indicators, but that's something we want to assess. Uh, so we've broken down cultural resources into four different themes, those being built environment, personal connection, um, history, and contemporary communities. Uh, so in addition to the park visitors that we want to assess, we also want to make sure that we're including the people that live in or near the parks or depend on the parks for resources. Um, so right now, this phase of the project, we have preliminary results for two of these four themes. Those are the built environment and the personal connection themes. Um, so throughout this summer, we're going to be finalizing these indicators uh, and finishing these overall assessments. And then we will bring them all together because in the park service, the natural and cultural resources are two halves of a whole. Um, so when we can finalize these assessments, uh, the, the tool itself is called the Resource Assessment for Management Strategies, or RAMS for short. Um, and again, that's just phases one and two of the project. Then we have to bring it onto the greater landscape scale. 
so this is the part we're still parsing out. Um, in the next two years, we will be uh, applying our data spatially. So those natural and cultural resources that we have uh, put into the condition assessments, we want to see how they lay out on the park landscape. Um, we're going to use that spatial data to suss out those management priorities in the region. So what are the areas of high concern? What are the areas of high density um, for like poor condition, cultural resources, or natural resources? Um, in addition to this mapping for phase three, we are doing all kinds of other aspects of analysis. Um, the one I want to highlight, though, is social network analysis. And I can't speak too much to it because it is not within my skill set. But um, the point of the social network analysis is to analyze the relationships among park staff. So the RAMS tool itself will manage the ecosystems and the resources within these parks, um, but the social network analysis is another form of management to identify you know, missing connections among the natural and cultural park staff or um, you know, areas of concern in their social network. So we have a grad student, Vanessa, who is working on that specifically. Um, so we will be finalizing this in the next two years. This project ends in 2021, so we have our work cut out for us. Um, but it's come a long way. So thank you. <laughs> you have a question? Yeah, just about your spatial analysis. What's your... Um, Format, how are you, uh, are you using GIS or where are you getting your information for that? Yeah, so the data that we're trying to apply spatially are from those condition assessments that we did. So natural is pretty straightforward. Cultural we're, of course, working on. Um, but all these data have to then have like a GPS location that we can actually pinpoint on a map. Um, but yes, we'll be building these like semi-interactive maps. The point is for it to be this tool that they can use and turn on and off data layers um, to see the big picture across all the 14 parks in the capital region. Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah, <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. Are there any themes that are emerging so far? I mean, are there some kind of Captain Obvious sort of like, oh boy, this is a sink, or something like that in the in the data that you've looked at so far? So I can tell you from the natural resource side, which again is a lot more straightforward, there are common problems across all the parks. You know, deer populations are a big concern. Air quality has been an issue in a lot of the parks. Um, water quality in some of the parks has been not so great. Uh, but the cultural resources is the one where we were really interested to see if there are some common themes across parks. Um, but it's been very difficult to align the data between these 14 parks because they don't have the same cultural resources between them. Yeah, they're all completely different from each other. Uh, yeah. <laughs> all right. Thanks. Thank you.